This is a case study in making functional parts with resin 3D printers. And I thought of using a firearm sound suppressor as an example because it has to contain the blast from the gunshot, which is something that's hard to do even when it's made out of metal. So I knew that if I could make it hold up to the firing of a real gun, then that would help prove the durability of this kind of printing process. So the first thing I had to do was find out what printer to use and what kind of resin to use in it. So I came up with a test. If I print a socket and use a torque wrench, how much torque would it take to break the part? So I got this digital torque sensor and I did 30 different tests where I bought all different kinds of resin. And the winner of that test was this Soraya Blue. It's particularly strong and tough and it can do over 90 newton meters of torque, which for example, that's very close to what the lug nuts on my Audi takes. So I was excited that it did that well and it made it seem like it was really possible to do this. So I'm going to um, design a sound suppressor now, which is optimized for 3D printing and has thicker walls than what you would use if it was made out of metal so that it has a good chance of surviving. So let's take the time now and I'll show you how I designed that part. Here I am in Fusion 360. SolidWorks is also a great choice and you could get a free hobbyist license for either one. I would recommend staying away from something like Tinkercad because that's not a real modeling program that you could progress with. That's really, it's just for children. And, and by children, I mean no more than third or fourth grade. Fusion 360 is not hard to learn. My 11 year old learned Fusion 360 in under an hour. And I think a lot of people could also do that. I made this shape by first making a profile and then revolving it. The profile is not how I would design a suppressor to be made out of metal. It has much thicker walls, a larger bore, and it's printed with no overhangs. And that means it does not need support material because there would be no way to remove it from inside. Threads are very easy in Fusion 360. They used to be murder in SolidWorks. You had to draw a helix and then make a thread tool and have it follow the path of the helix. It was absolutely crazy. And they didn't even fix it until about two years ago, which is just unthinkable. They finally did add a threading tool, but it's a bit tacked on and it's not as elegant as the one in Fusion. And that's how I feel about SolidWorks in general now. They add features and they're, they're all pasted in there but it's not as much of a fresh start as Fusion. You, you sort of have a benefit coming into the game later because Autodesk had already created Inventor and some other pro tools. So with Fusion, they could start from scratch and do everything in a very nice way. So I would recommend just getting started with that. Also, I wanted to point out these holes around the perimeter are not for the sound suppressor's benefit. When you print, a vacuum can form in the build plate area, and that's just to let air in and allow the part to peel off the um, clear film more easily. And here is what the profile looks like from a cross section. You can see that it's quite beefy and that helps it survive when printed out of plastic. So laser uses a vector process to write out each layer using resin that's sensitive to ultraviolet light. And then it advances to the next layer. Uh, this is a Form 1 Plus machine. I'm testing it now because I'm selling it. Uh, these have been out for a while. They cost about $3,500 new. This is what I'm using now. This is called a Moai. You can buy this from matterhackers.com or from the company's own website. 
This is a kit, it's about $1,200, and it takes, it took me four hours to put it together. Um, it's quite simple inside, so it's easy to work on, and the nice thing about building it yourself is that once you have built it, you really understand it, so you can maintain it. Now we have to lay this out in what's called the slicing program. So you import the STL file and you break it down into slices that could be 50 or 100 microns in thickness. I'm kind of a fan of 100 microns now, but almost everybody uses 50 micron slices. I find the 100 looks great, it's very strong, and it prints almost twice as fast. Now I'm sending this file off to my friend to be printed on his machine. He's the one who will test fire it because not only is he a federally licensed manufacturer also, but it's a bit wintry where I am now and he is in the southwestern United States, which makes for a much nicer testing environment. He fired an entire box of 22 long rifle, both through a long gun and a 22 conversion. He said it sounded great and there was no apparent damage to the sound suppressor. Let's talk a little bit about the legality of sound suppressors. Now it's different for different countries and it's different for different states within the United States. But basically, in general, you have to get permission from the government and you do that by filling out some paperwork and you submit it with a $200 tax. And if you get approved for it and you get the paperwork back, then you can make the sound suppressor. Uh, there's also another way. You can become a licensed manufacturer, which is what I am. And you do that also by an application process and you have to pay a yearly fee. You have to have inspections. It's a much bigger deal, so very few people do that. But if you're a licensed manufacturer, then you can uh, go ahead and make as many as you want, and you could even sell them. Now, you would never make a sound suppressor on a 3D printer using plastic for the purpose of selling it, and it's not even a good way to make them for your own personal use. But um, whether you make it for a business or you even make one of them just to try, you absolutely can't do it without having the proper paperwork. You can join the internet forum silencertalk.com and there's a lot of people you can talk to and there's things you can read to find out how to do that legally.